Well, hello, friends. Welcome back, and we continue this journey in looking at bullying and social aggression. In this video, we're going to discuss briefly the effects of bullying upon the victim, the bully, and the, and the uh, school or, or learning environment. And then we're going to talk briefly a couple of strategies for prevention, and we will continue these strategies in subsequent videos. I remind you that only the best are bullied. If they're being bullied, they must be the best. Now, where does bullying occur? And we'll start here as we, can, as we begin this video. Well, the answer to that is bullying can occur anywhere. Bullying can occur at school, on the way to school. It can occur in the church. It can occur in Sunday school. It can occur in a mosque, in, in a training lesson. It can occur in a, uh, in a mall. It can, bullying just simply can occur anywhere. Bullying, though, generally occurs where supervision is less likely to be present. The, the uh, presence of a, a minded, a, 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 a right-minded supervisor does a lot to deter uh, bullying. Now, bullying in school takes place in the classroom, on the playground, in hallways, in gyms, in locker rooms, and in bathrooms. Now, I want you to think about this just a minute. Uh, you see the range. For, you think of classroom. You think of younger children. Gym, you think of older children. Hallways, you know, could be boys and girls. Uh, uh, all of the locker rooms, you think of athletics. Bullying can occur just about anywhere. But if you look at these places, many times these are less supervised places where bullying is occurring. Bullying is two or three times more likely to occur at school as it is to occur on the way to school. So, you know, it's kind of strange that a child would be in less danger of bullying on the way to school or home from school than they would be at school. Now, we're going to talk about the effects of bullying and just ask the question, why should we attempt to prevent bullying? Uh, bullying certainly has some very harmful effects. These occur both in short term and in the long term. Bullying produces negative effects on the victim, the bully, and the school social climate. All three suffer as a result of bullying. The victim suffers, the bully suffers, and the school social climate suffers. Now, short-term effects on the victim may include the following. Painful and humiliating experiences can cause young victims to be unhappy, distressed, and confused. Uh, I like to think about this. A, a child comes into the school environment. They're happy. They, they come from a, a nurturing home, and then they're bullied. And then all of a sudden, you have all of this distress, this unhappiness, this confusion about why is this happening to me? Victims lose self-esteem and become anxious and insecure. And physical injury or threats of physical injury may cause, may affect concentration and learning and result in a refusal to attend school. You know, it's hard to learn. It's hard to be engaged in activities when you're being bullied and when you're being threatened. And one of the ways out of that is just simply to say, I'm not going, and make up excuses and all sorts of things. Victims may feel that they're stupid. They may be ashamed. They may think they're unattractive. And, and that happens a lot to young ladies. They may start to view themselves as failures. All of these in the short term simply because they're being bullied. They may develop psychosomatic symptoms such as stomach ache, such as stomach problems or or headaches. Um, I, I think about you know a kid that uh, is under great stress because they're being bullied. The parents trying to make them go to school, and then these illnesses beset them. There are short term and long term, by the way, physical uh, problems that occur as a result of being bullied. Now, constant devaluation of themselves may lead to depression and suicide. I'm telling you, this is bullying is a serious issue. More than one child has taken their life because they were bullied. And when as a teacher or as a supervisor, a pastor, a leader, 
uh, uh, what a rabbi, whatever you might be as you deal with younger people, you need to understand that bullying is a very, very, very serious issue. Never turn your back upon it. Never just write it off. It's not it's something that's not important. It is important. And, and don't wait until a child has, has taken their life before you deem it to be important. Some of the long-term effects on the victim may include uh, the, this. Former victims tend to be more depressed and have poor self-esteem than their non-victimized peers. We're talking about issues that, that really affect an individual long-term. And, and as they, even as they grow older and, and as they move into different environments, they may have, high, have higher levels of depression, poor self-esteem, and, and depression and, and self-esteem, low self-esteem have great bearing upon individual success. So bullying is a very serious issue from the viewpoint of the victim of the bully. Now, bullying also may have long-term effects on the bully. I don't want you to overlook that, but it may have long-term effects on the bully. Uh, students, particularly boys who bully, are more likely to engage in other antisocial and delinquent behavior on into adulthood. And this includes things like vandalism, shoplifting, truancy, and drug use. So bullying has a long-term negative effect on the bully, just as it has upon the victim. Bullies are four times as likely as non-bullies to be convicted of crimes by age 24. Once you pass that barrier and you lose empathy for other people and you begin to gain your self-esteem by what you do to other people or to try to gain your self-esteem by what you do to other people, you have crossed a border that will lead you down to a path of destruction. And bullies are four times as likely as non-bullies to be convicted of crimes by age 24. Physical bu uh, bullying is a moderate risk factor for serious violence at ages 15 through 25. Bullying is a gateway crime. It may lead into much more serious issues down the road. Now, the effects on the school climate may include such things as students may tend to feel less safe and thus are less satisfied with school life in schools where bullying and victim problems occur. If bullying is going on over here with someone else and a student witnesses that, then they may personally feel less safe and be much less satisfied with their school life. Now that has long-term ramifications upon their learning and upon their engagement in the educational process. In schools where bully victim problems are ignored, uh, students may start to regard bullying behavior as acceptable. Now that's a scary thought. And this may result in more bullying behavior as well as other possible more severe problems. Uh, it's just if it's ignored, they may begin to think that it's normal and accepted. Now I want to share with you four basic principles for prevention or intervention in bullying victim programs. The first is awareness and warm, positive involvement of adults. And that means teachers, principals, school uh, counselors, and parents. You know, uh, all that's required for evil to prevail is good people to stand around and do nothing. Teachers, principals, school counselors, and parents need to be proactive in resisting the effects of bullying. And when children and young people are bullied, they need to be very supportive of trying to help them understand that they are a victim and what has happened to them so that they don't internalize and blame themselves for the occasion. So, you know, one of the principles for prevention or intervention is for adults to be informed and to be involved. Uh, set and stick to firm limits as to what behavior is unacceptable. Uh, bullying is not accepted in our school. Uh, my wife recently in Sunday school had to say, bullying is not acceptable in this church and in this Sunday school class. A good friend of mine who, who is a rabbi has, had told me he, he had to sit down with some adults and say, you do not bully others in this, in this, in our, in our, our family. Now, that's not unique simply because he was a rabbi. I imagine there are a few, uh, few uh, pastors out there that have been bullied by deacons, a few members that have been bullied by pastors. You know, it just goes, 
goes on and on, that you have to set firm limits as to what behavior is unacceptable. If, if you're willing to turn away from it and you're not willing to pay the price to deal with it, then it's going to occur. Now, you have to consistently apply non-hostile, non-physical negative consequences for rule violation and unacceptable behavior. Now, if you'll recall, one of the risk factors for being a bully is a home which has undue uh, violence, and in other words, parents are not there to nurture. If paying violence back with violence does not end violence. <laughs> it just simply causes it to be more active. You need to set non-hostile, non-physical negative consequences for rule violations. You deal with it, and when there's unacceptable behavior there, don't turn your back on it, but have a very clear consequence that you know is going to occur. And I hate to quote the, the hanging judge Smith out of Fort Smith, Arkansas, hung so many people, hang so many people for breaking the law, but he said it wasn't the severity of the punishment, but the certainty of it that deterred crime. So, you know, if, if the bully knows that there's going to be un, a negative consequences and they're going to be dealt with, and, and you, then, then they're going to be less likely to bully, and you need to design those consequences where they're non-hostile and non-physical, but that, that they are certain and that they are real. You need to encourage adults to act as authorities and positive role models in students' academic learning and social relationships in school. Uh, I recall from public school years ago, when I was a young man, there was a kid that others would regularly beat up. And it really upset me. And I, I went to the principal and I said, they're attacking this guy. They'd beat him up everywhere he went. Well, you know, the, the principal semi-stepped in. He didn't do anything. They, did, they didn't come after me because... The Waller clan is so big and so large that if they checked with me, I had nine old locals. They better leave the world, you know, find a place to hide on the moon. But, but some of the teachers actually took the wrong side. Now, that young man killed himself a number of years later. That's a tragedy. How could any adult not feel a need to be an authority? to step in when it occurs and to make it very clear that the behavior is totally unacceptable and deal with the behavior in a legitimate manner. And adults need to encourage and act as authorities. They need to tell, set the environment, set the environment for young people, make the expectations known, and be certain that they never, ever participate in these sorts of behaviors in front of students. Be good role models. And social relationships, you know, the kids uh, beating one kid down or go after another, teachers need to do the best they can to undo those negative effects. Again, I want to thank you very much for your patronage. More videos follow as always. May the odds be ever in your favor. Again, unless we're in the same event. Now, if we're in the same event, I don't want the odds in your favor. It'll be every man for himself. But you have a great day. And thank you for uh, viewing these videos. I hope you found them helpful.